Hi! Welcome back! In a previous video, we learned about seaborne regression plots. These are the topics that we covered in that video. If you haven't watched it yet or are interested in learning more about these concepts, I'd suggest you check out that video as well. In this video, we're going to be exploring seaborne categorical plots. We'll learn about creating count plot, bar plot, strip plot, swarm plot, box plot, and to utilize hue. Let's jump right in. Okay, so for this one, we're going to start out by importing um, Python library Seaborn, as well as um, including the matplotlib inline line in order to show the plots on Jupyter Notebook. Um, the second thing we're going to do is, <clears throat> similar to the last video, we're going to use this um, tips data set. So we're just going to load this the same as last time um, and also um, see how it looks by calling tip.head. Yeah, so here we can just see the first five rows and um, these, these different features as well as um, what we're predicting, which is tip. So um, what we can do here is we can do a count plot, <clears throat> which is basically going to show, um, well, we can specify an X, which is a column. And it'll basically show the counts for this column. So if we do time, that's going to be lunch vs dinner. And we can see that there are a lot more people coming at dinner, um, or at least that's what's in this uh, data frame. So um, that kind of gives us a sense about what we should think about when we see the uh, graphs going forward. Um, and we can also create a bar plot. And this is basically going to take kind of like the average um, or the um, kind of the middle middle area for the lunch and the dinner. So what um, what is the tip, or sorry, what is the total bill um, for a person coming in during lunch? Like what is it usually, the average? Um, and then uh, what is it for dinner as well? Right, so we can see here, um, usually it's around um, $17 for lunch and dinner is obviously more. Um, but also we should remember that more people are there, but that might just confirm that it's probably right since we have such a large sample size. So it's a, a little bit over 20, um, for dinner. So people generally pay more for dinner than they do for lunch, um, is something that we can kind of infer out of these, um, graphs here. So the next thing that we're going to do is, um, strip plot. So this strip plot will draw a scatter plot, um, where one variable is categorical. And it's called strip plot because it kind of looks like a long strip rather than it being um, kind of scattered all over the board. It's just kind of vertical um, dots. So we can do X as the day and then Y as the total bill. So basically we're seeing how the day affects the total bill. And as I said, um, categorical variables are what we use for these. So day is gonna be categorical because there's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So here's the um, strip plot. So we can see how generally we see that Saturday and Sunday um, have a higher total bill, which we also saw through the bar plot. Um, and we can see this because kind of their the outliers are um, higher up. Um, and we'll also look more into these this outlier um, concept when we do box and whisker. Um, <clears throat> But for now, let's try um, customizing this strip plot just a little bit more um, to, uh, to add a hue. So we're gonna add a hue as the time. So this one is basically going to have separate colors for each one, um, and it's gonna show kind of how the, the time is, um, how the time plays a part in this um, day versus total bill. Um, yeah, and we can do shift tab to kind of see the doc string as well as the parameters. Um, but for now, we will enter this and see. Um, and we see that actually like Saturday and Sunday, there are either almost no lunches or just very few. Um, Thursday, there is also, um, it's, it's actually mostly lunches. Um, and then Friday is mostly, um, mostly dinner, but there are a few lunches, so it's kind of like decreasing. Um, and this might be also why the general <clears throat> total bill is more on Saturday and Sunday. Um, it's, it's because most people come in dinner, and we know that dinner plays a part on the price, the total bill. Um, and so we can also, um, instead of having it um, 
kind of overlapping, we can use the swarm plot to, um, it, it's similar to strip plot, but it doesn't clump the data points and separates them out, which gives better approximation of how many values fall in each subcategory. So um, since it's laid out a little bit nicer and they don't overlap, we can really see that there are, um, like kind of how many there are and where they fall in general. Um, and as I said a little bit ago, um, we're gonna look at box plot, which basically um, gives a distribution of quantitative data, um, such as median, IQR, outliers, etc. Um, and so we can look at this to see that Saturday and Sunday, or all of them have outliers, but the ones on Saturday and Sunday are generally more. And then also the um, general median is higher and the min is actually lower for Saturday, but the max is higher for Saturday and Sunday. And these are all things that we've been seeing through the other plots as well, but it's just a, um, a clear way to see it in this box and whisker. And then finally, we can keep um, this box and whisker idea, but add a hue to it. So smoker to see if, um, a, pers if a person is a smoker, do they usually pay more or less? And here we can see that um, they kind of pay more um, because generally it, it goes higher when you have yes, which is blue. So just as a quick recap, we reviewed the tips data set um, and then we saw count plot and we saw um, this bar plot. Uh, and then we moved on to strip plot where we saw kind of based on categorical variables. And then we separated the split plot um, or st the strip plot. And we saw the swarm plot where it's a little bit easier to see than a strip plot because it doesn't overlap. And then we finished off with two types of box, box plots, um, one with uh, hue. Well, that's it for now. If you've enjoyed the content in this video, make sure to give it a like and comment down below any questions you may have. I've also included a little activity in the description box that relates to the skills we learned in this video. So I welcome you to try that out as well. If you're new here, then make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos that'll help you on your journey towards mastering artificial intelligence. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.